What's up everybody? Welcome back to this episode of Home Built Workshop. Today, I'm going to take these few random parts. We're going to build a really simple buffer. Since I've been doing some more guitar work lately, I figured it might be kind of handy to have a small buffer on hand just to use for polishing frets and other pieces of hardware or anything like that and any number of uses around the house and the shop. So I ordered up a few parts including a buffing wheel, some compound, and an arbor to put the buffing wheel onto a motor. Should be really simple to put together. The hardest part is going to be building a riser out of just some plywood, and even that is not going to be all that difficult. So the pieces I'm going to use are going to be this motor. This is a one-third horsepower motor. Not super powerful, but for spinning a small buffing wheel like this, I think it's going to work fine. I'm going to use this scrap of three-quarter inch plywood for the base, and I ordered an arbor online to connect the buffing wheel to the shaft of this motor. I think my first order of business is going to be to install the arbor and the buffing wheel. That way the motor is complete and I can get the dimensions for the base off the completed unit. So it's pretty easy to see why I want to build a riser if I just bolt this thing to this piece of plywood. The wheel spins, but I really don't have any clearance to a tabletop. So I want to make sure I have plenty of room to be able to work around this buffing wheel. I'll just take a couple of dimensions from the base of the motor. I'm going to mark out the plywood slightly oversized and break it down using a circular saw. Now I'll rip those pieces down to their final width. And cross cut them to the length. I'll cut all four sides of the riser, as well as a little bit wider piece that'll be the top. So apparently at this point in the process, I forgot to hit record on the camera. Whoops. Well, you didn't really miss a whole lot. It wasn't really a complicated process assembling the box. Just some glue, butt jointed the pieces together, secured them with some pin nails, and then now we'll pick up where I'm installing the bottom of the box. I've cut a piece of the same plywood that I'll glue and pin to the bottom of this box. I'll also glue in some small cleats to the top. Now while that glue's drying, I'm just going to take the piece that's going to be the top. I'll set the motor in place. I'll line it up and mark out the mounting holes for the motor. When I'm marking out the holes, I'm just tracing the slots on the motor and I'll eyeball the center and drill them out on the drill press. The exact position of the holes is not that critical here. I don't really need to account for any adjustment of the motor to tighten a belt or anything like that. The top will fit right on the base like this, but I've already run into a small snag. Seems as though I did not account for these cleats when I drilled the holes for the motor. Had I thought about it, I should have put the cleats running this way because the motor mounting bolts are going to go right down through this cleat. Not that big a deal, but now I do need to make room in this cleat to account for the motor bolts. Isn't it funny how even on the simplest of projects, there always seems to be some sort of little holdup. I got some nasty tear out in there, but that's to be expected. I'm drilling plywood without using any sort of backer board. Thankfully, it's not that critical. Doesn't look that bad. Now I'll just line up the box, even on the base. I'll just lightly clamp that box in place and secure it from the bottom with a few screws. Now I can bolt the motor to the top. I'm gonna have to get some washers to put on there. Right now, I don't have any, so we're just rolling with it. Now I can take the whole unit, set it on top, I'll line up the edges, then just pre-drill some holes and screw the top down. Could we call this buffer good to go right now? Yep, we sure could. It would be perfectly functional, but one thing that's pain in the neck that I found, especially with the belt grinder, we don't have a switch and I don't want it to plug this thing in. So let's add a switch.
And just like that, my simple homemade buffer is complete. All we need to do now is test it out. We'll just crank it up, load the wheel up with some green buffing rouge, and we'll polish the frets on this cigar box guitar neck. Well, so there it is. The little thing seems to work pretty good even though it's quick and simple, not fancy at all, but it is effective and it will be getting some use here around the shop. I can already see this project as version one. I think this motor spins a little bit too fast for this buffing wheel. I noticed when I was buffing that guitar neck that it was kind of getting a little bit warm, so I think this speed should be a little bit lower. So maybe in a version two, I might do a belt drive and reduce the speed by maybe about half using a different size pulleys and maybe we could do something different maybe double ended i don't know i've already got the gears turning for this next project if you guys have built something similar to this leave a comment down below in the description and let me know things that you like and things that you don't like about your homemade machine and it's going to just give me some ideas keep the wheels going and we'll see if i happen to ever get around to doing version two if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also hit the subscribe button. And as always, down below in the description, you'll find links to all my social media as well as my website, homebuiltworkshop.com. We're over there. You can find some stickers and t-shirts and stuff like that if you're so interested. So thanks a lot for watching, everybody, and we'll see you next time. I just did that without safety glasses. Oh boy, you're gonna tear me up for that one. <laughs> I just had a rag. We'll pretend like you didn't just see that.